Hey there guys, gals, fans, and pals, John Megacycle here. Another, oh, I always say another episode. It's such a force of habit. Brr! An episode of Factory Town, hopefully a little mini-series. Um, this game, as of right now, is still in its beta development phase, what have you. Um, I needed something personally that itched a certain need of like management and uh, resources and how to get logistics. Like, I got a thing here, how do I get it over there? And I played the heck out of Autonauts, and I needed a small break from Factorio and Production Line, and I just wanted to try something new. This caught my eye. It was a recommendation. And I, I played it for like, I don't know, maybe a half hour. I didn't get too far. Um, and I wanted to share it with you. I don't know. Like, I, I've, got, I've got this strong urge. As I always mention, it's like if I find a game and I find it's interesting and I, I'm playing it and I'm really getting into it and I'm enjoying it, I want to share it with people. Like, that's my passion. Like, I want to be like, this is a thing I really like. I want to share it with you. It might not be your thing, and that's totally cool, but I want to share it. It's like like all my old Super Nintendo games I play, like Utopia. Like, I'll get like two views on a video, and I don't care. It's a great game to me, and I'm excited to share it. It's that energy that I want to share most of all. So, I get excited about games. I don't know. Like they, do, they do something for me, and I like them. Um, anyway, uh, let, let's talk about this a little bit more. This is Factory Town. Um, as I was saying before, it kind of itches that management, resource, gathering, logistics itch. It just has this kind of a, I don't know, it's colorful, it's fun, it's playful. We're not going to be defending our fortress against bugs. We're not going to be trying to fight off biters. It's a very clean, very simple, very fun game. So, um, when you hit new game, you get to pick a couple of things to get the game started. Map size medium is fine. I don't screw with a lot of this stuff. Uh, smooth starting area on, please. Thank you so much. Auto place base off. Thank you kindly. This game is a little tricky in the user interface department, but I'm gonna we're gonna hold hands. We'll go get a soda. We'll chill. We'll talk. We'll be bros. Whatever. I'll walk you through it. It'll be fine. Don't worry. So normally the game starts with an auto place base. It's your core structure with four workers and you just start the game from there. And I kind of want to think if there's anything really else I want to explain. Oh, I guess if you've ever played Settlers. Um, Settlers is a really old game similar to this in, in like feel, I guess. But it also had a bit of a military aspect and the idea was to conquer other civilizations. Um, this one doesn't have any military, it's just whatever. So anyway, blah, 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 blah. I'm getting way ahead of myself. Auto place base off, just create. Um, tool tips, when the game starts, I'm just gonna shut that off. I'll walk you through some stuff. Um, okay, I don't care. Um, the game also starts off with a tutorial. I'm actually gonna go ahead and shut that off. Um, the game actually goes through and says, this is how you do this. Click this thing. Click this thing. Great, you did it. Hooray. Here's the next thing. Click this thing. Do this thing. Hooray. Good for you. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and shut that off. You can easily go through that if it's your first time or whatever. Um, there's no real time. Time is a thing that happens, but it doesn't affect us from doing anything. You can pause the game by hitting space. Big deal. Um, this game has a lot going on and it's a lot to take in so I haven't done anything I haven't placed my beginning structure. I don't have workers running around. Let's take this kind of one step at a time Yeah, the very first thing that we're going to do is scroll out a bit and we're gonna just check around just check around get a good feel for the map Right you see a lot of resources. You got stone. You got coal. You got iron ore. You got wheat. You got apples You got trees. I don't know if I said trees. I see some fishy fishies right away on raw fish um, we've got gold, we've got gems, we got water stones, air stones, we've got we've got a bunch of stuff that's very visible. Mana shards, I don't even know what those are. Cotton, trees, stone, tomatoes, grain. Um, yeah, so we've got a lot of base resources here and how we use these resources will determine how quickly our, I don't know what it's called, our city, our nation, our capital, our area, how, how quickly we grow as people, that kind of a thing. More mana shards, I didn't get, I had no idea what mana shards do. Now that we're getting a good familiarity with what is on the map, the idea also is later on we can actually purchase more land if we wanted more land. So those are options as well. Just gonna go all the way around just to show you, you can buy 
all this, all this can be yours. Um, a couple things to note, you can also terraform the land at a cost. So don't, don't be weird, like it's like, oh, there's rivers, and there's two rivers here, and this is a bad spot, because rivers and rivers. Don't worry about that, it's totally cool, we can change the land and everything we want, the way we want, and how we want. Okay? One of the first things that we're going to do is we're going to hit B for build. Um, B and Z are the two keys you're going to want to keep your hands on. B, or, or even anything that opens up a menu. Just clicking through some of the hot items here right here. Z will cancel whatever you were doing. Um, also, sometimes over here, maybe I closed this on accident when I first started, but here there's a select and a camera lock. Depending on what you have selected, it's actually a contextual menu. It'll tell you what's going on, the resources, and what the deposit is in the upper right. Um, I'll just hit period on my keyboard. Apparently this tells me the goods supply, or period help. Okay, there we go. It tells you all the items. So, I've done a lot of talking. Let's just get playing, right? I'm not a professional. I'm not expert class. I just want to have fun with this game and I want to share it with you. So, what we're going to do first of all is hit B and buildings. And the first item we get is a base. This base is already set up for you if you set preset base or pre placed base or however it was said uh, but I said no because I wanted to I like to I like to pick my starting location this is like a bit of a, a hall like a, like a I don't know a keep perhaps start to get a good yeah there you go maybe a bit of a castle kind of a thing um, it's where a lot of our goods are going to be stored it's the central distribution point for a lot of our things right so what I really want to do is I kind of want to put this where there's a lot of raw resources so we got stone we got coal we got trees we got iron ore we have mana shards that wouldn't be a bad spot stone stone coal now this game is an interesting component to it in terms of how we're going to build up our base you don't have to build it in one central area think of a game like um uh banished i think it was called banished it made more sense to have stuff a little more centralized and you could expand out. Um, but I never felt it was very easy for that to be done. Um, anyway, let's go ahead and get started. I want to build my base. Um, I think somewhere over here would be good. There's lots of trees. I can get started with a lot of the raw materials I need to get started. Um, I find this acceptable. Now we've got our base, if you click on it, in the very upper right is the inventory of everything that's in it. There is a finite supply of everything, and all commodities can only actually take up one slot. So let's say the most lumber one slot can hold, of uh, wood I should say, is 100. I can't hold 100, then 200, then 300, then 400, that's it. Once one slot is filled, that's it. Okay, so the UI, like I said, is a little touchy. This game is still in development, but let's go ahead and try to get started with some of the basics. Selecting is left click, as it says in the contextual menu over here. Right click is camera look. Um, the keyboard also has a lot of camera specific things that you can do with it. So there's a lot of ways to view literally 100% of the game. There's nothing hiding. You can, you can always see anything from any angle. Um, but when we do our selection, this is a lot like current RTSs. When you right click is when stuff happens. I left click on grain and nothing happened. So in general terms, left clicking is for selecting, right clicking is for doing, okay? I wanna harvest some lumber. In the tutorial, it would tell us, hey, once you start harvesting some lumber, build some houses, start to build an economy. Okay, well, let's just start collecting some lumber. And while our workers are doing that, I'll walk you through what we're gonna do with houses and such. As it stands right now, we have four workers. They don't cost us anything upkeep-wise, they're just here. Once you buy or pay for or recruit a worker, they're yours, that's it. So we're gonna give them some orders, I have two selected. I want them to chop down this tree, and you can see my icon changed. So I'm going to right click, and I've got the two selected. So they, the first order is to go here. Now they have lumber in their hands, assuming first step, walk to the tree, second step, cut it down. Now I have the lumber, now what's step three? Well, I wanna store that lumber. So I'm gonna right click on the base. My guys have orders. If you're also familiar with a game called Autonauts, a lot of these core concepts are gonna be very simple, but instead of Autonauts being heavy on the programming, this game is gonna be very light. 
it's very simplistic in the programming side. You don't have to tell a robot, walk here, chop tree, drop axe, pick up log, take log to store, place in store, go back to axe, pick it up, go to next tree. You know, That's all logic you can write in your head. But this game is going to be a lot more simplistic, and that's a good thing. Sorry, my chair creaky creakied. Um, so, let's do a little bit more exploring while we're collecting some lumber, right? In the upper left, we've got our base level. We've got how many houses we have built and how many we can build. We have how many workers we have in our capacity. We have general happiness. When we supply our people with products, goods, materials, supplies, whatever, they feel happier. Having a diverse diet, they feel happier. Having different kinds of construction goods, they feel happier. That, just having different toys, different knickknacks, different things. It's like, it's like um, not just entertainment. They feel happier. The happier they are, the more production increase you have. Just naturally. Just naturally. There's nothing you got to do about it. Just keep the goods flowing. If the goods stop flowing, like let's say that diverse diet, right? Let's say wheat, meat, fish, berries, and there you go. That, those four different items are in different categories, let's say. And that gives a nice benefit. But if one of those things stops, the happiness will go down. That becomes a problem. Let's just continue. We'll touch happiness a bit more later. Uh, yellow coins, red coins, blue coins, purple coins are all different tiers of currency. Certain coins are used for certain things. Right now we got yellow coins. We're going to be in yellow coins for maybe, I don't know, the next this episode and next episode until we get that all figured out, how it all pans out, right? So don't worry about it too much. This is also a quick look at our inventory. These are all the things that we can possibly work on and store and have right now. Right now, in our shared inventories, we have 58, 59 wood, so we're stockpiling on some wood, yeah? Cool. So now that I told you all that, at the very bottom, really the last thing here is there's a bunch of menus here. I haven't actually gone into them a whole mess. Um, if you want to see like a grid overlay, this is another way to view the map that might make it easier for those who prefer that sort of a thing. Otherwise, we've got our, I don't know, angled view. So you got like the bird's eye grid and you got this angled view, right? Um, there's a couple of other things you can go into, like a breakdown of goods and supply um, research, which we're not going to get to for a little bit. And then these are some hot keys. So you got uh, most of your basic stuff already unlocked worker footpath house, lumber mill, and terrain block up. That's used for terraforming. Uh, we'll need red coins to do any real terraforming, so we're not going to worry about that. Um, workers, exactly like you see here. We need more houses before we can get more workers. Um, a footpath is actually pretty nice. This actually helps your people move faster. So I don't know, just compare the left guy. Oh, yep, see, so they're emphasizing using the path to try to get to the lumber faster. So that's a neat thing to note. Um, when we spread out and expand, we're going to want to make sure that we've got those also set up. You know, anytime we're connecting chunks of area to other chunks, we're going to want that. So we've done enough of that. Let's actually get to start building some stuff, yeah? So in the tutorial, one of the things we're going to work on is house. Um, the house, we can build a maximum of four because of our base level of level one. It costs 15 wood, and everything's got a nice little tooltip. So right here, increases population capacity, also consumes goods in exchange for coins. Very good. So let's go ahead and get some of these started. Um, the recommendation, like I was going to say in the tutorial, is that you build this actually away from your base. Find a nice flat area that you can actually build up a bit. So right now I'm seeing some commodities here. I'm seeing grain, I'm seeing tomatoes, I'm seeing sugar. Uh, I thought I saw some fish. Are there apple trees? There's apple trees in there. Uh, I'm not seeing any. Oh, yep, there's fish. Okay, cool. So we've got a good amount of foodstuffs. What about here? Would here be any better? Uh, I don't like this. This is not very flat land. Flat land is kind of what I'm into. I don't want to spend a ton of money terraforming. So here's how we're going to do. One, two, three, four houses. That's the maximum we can build. We had enough lumber for it, and that was that. Actually, before we get started with that, let's just take you guys, get harvesting some lumber. Cool. I don't want to waste a whole ton of time here. So what we have here for breakdown for the house is these houses become places you can sell your goods at, which is very, very, very helpful. 
that's how we're going to get an income. So we're going to sell our products to people that live in these houses. We're going to get coins. We'll be able to advance in the tech tree and so on and so forth. I apologize. My chair is hella creaky. I slapped some WD-40 on it and it did not like it apparently. Um, so what we're going to need is a bunch of coins. Um, hiring workers cost coins. Research uh, doesn't cost coins. But like more advanced products cost coins as an upkeep. So we're going to need a bunch of it. So right now, um, I saw some apple trees here. Let's call up a, a bunch of workers. I'm just hitting one, just one on my keyboard, or you can hit worker here, or if you want to use the build menu, hit B, workers, worker. Okay? Another cool thing about this game is it shows you all the technology and the fact that it's locked, and it'll tell you why it's locked. So if there's any, ever anything you're like, Oh, I saw this other guy play and he had wagons. How the hell do I get wagons? What's that all about? You can come here and you can see exactly what's up with the wagon. What it does, how it works, and all that. So let's, let's hire some workers, right? I got 20 yellow coins. I hit one again. One, two, three, four, and now I'm broke. So now Johnny needs some money. I'm going to grab this worker here. I want you to attack this apple tree bring the apples to the house and let's just watch what happens we have zero happy people here that's what this means we have zero happy people because i'm not bringing any goods Ooh, we have now one person that's happy because apples are being sold the apple got dropped off the person consumed it and now i'm getting paid right so let's continue this process with the other houses go there go there and nope wrong dude and go there now these are not infinite supply. If I click on one of these, you can see how many resources we have. 139 on, well now 138 on that one tree. That's not bad. That's going to keep us going for a little bit. Cool. We have some happy people. Up here in the upper right, upper right, sorry, upper left, we have happiness of four. So we have four happiness. That's how it's measured. And because of it, we have zero additional production, which is fine. We got to get our we got to get our happiness up a bunch if that's gonna get somewhere. But as it stands right now, we have some happy people. If I come over here and take a look, there's a new area over here called happiness. This will tell you all the things that are generating happiness. So, like I said before, can I just click on that? Awesome. Like I said before, different kinds of diets. So milk, potatoes, carrots, tomatoes. So I mean, tomatoes are fruits, right? So I guess generally milk, fruits, grains, veggies, kind of a thing. So having a diverse diet increases happiness too. So happiness isn't the first thing we're aiming for. Don't worry too much about it. We're not gunning for happiness, but it's something to keep in mind. Oh, now that we've been gabbing so much, you can see right here, like I said, so the maximum capacity for the base is 200 lumber. Um, because it filled the one lumber tile or wood tile, I, ugh, lumber, wood, timber, I always get the terms mixed up. Because we filled this one tile already, we're done. We can't have any more wood. So here's what we're going to do. Take my workers, come over here. Now, there's a couple things you can do, but realistically, I need to have them drop the lumber. They don't just drop things. The only way they will drop things is if I spend the lumber that's here. There's, As far as I know, there's no way to drop the items in their hands. Um, so what I'm going to do, I don't think there's really anything, well, actually, I'm gonna show you this first. This is something that's a little expensive in the early game, but can just save you a ton of headache later on. There's no real place for me to put the lumber here. So I'm gonna hover them and just do delete. Now, I got the money back. I don't know if you noticed, but my gold literally jumped the 20, so I got a refund, and then I just placed the workers again. No harm, no foul, right? Worked out pretty well. So, that's a quick tip. They they don't have their items on them anymore. That's all there is to it. So, there's a couple things going on here. Um, what I want to do is I want to upgrade the level of my base. That's one way to really identify when you're evolving up the tech tree. A higher base means more stuff is accessed to you or accessible to you, and that's really cool. So in the lower right here shows me what I need to upgrade. I need 20 yellow coins. I need some planks. I need some stone. Okay. Well, we have some stone right here. So I'm just going to spend three of you. Why don't you go get some stone? Actually, let's just spend four of you. Why not? There we go. And they're just going to harvest the stone on their merry. 
bring it back to base. And now if you see in the upper left right here, the stone is actually added to our global stockpile. Very cool, right? Um, we're still making a nice amount of coin. These guys are enjoying a fresh bushel of apple, which is very nice. Um, let's go ahead and move up our tech tree a little bit. The next thing that we're going to want to concern ourselves with is the lumber mill. We needed the stone to build the lumber mill anyway. And what this does is it turns wood into planks or paper. Paper is going to be necessary for research later. Not so critical right now, but want to just make note of that. Our rotate structures. And this is going to be set up very similarly to everything else we've done. When we build new structures or research new things or upgrade structures we already own, there's a potential of new unlocks. Right now, this just tells us all the unlocks that we just had. So the chute rolls valid items down a length of chute. I've only actually found one or two items that this works on. So I'll have to do some experimenting. We'll do some experimenting together, actually. Um, then there's little structures. These are ramps and scaffolds and stuff um, to help with building on uneven terrain and also build bridges and such, and then a wooden bench. Okay, We built our first real production structure. What this gives us is a prompt right here, a gear and a question mark. It says, I don't have a recipe. There's a bunch of things I can do. You have to pick one. What we're going to pick are the only things we can pick, which are planks. Every single recipe has a requirement. So what does it need for this recipe to be complete? How long does it take? What does it produce? It always has those three things, raw resources, time, finished product. There might be a recipe later on when we get to mana stones that I'm not sure of or what have you. But as of right now, that's kind of where we're at. So let's go ahead and select planks. We've now selected a recipe. Now, this works a little bit finicky. There's a guy in the lumber mill already. You see that one next to the little caricature? That one comes from our stash, our already allocated stash. If I go ahead and say zero, this turns to zero, and now it's eight. So I'm not taking a worker and putting it inside the lumber mill. We're just saying how many workers we want, that changes the speed according to how many people are working in it. But you have to have available workers in order to get them in a facility. That's super important. I stumbled on that when I first started playing. So this is going to work very similarly to everything else. Let's get three workers. I'm going to take two of these workers. Now remember, this requires law, raw wood. I could either cut down the trees and feed it into the lumber mill, or I could get it from my base. But let's just cut down the tree. So tree, I want you to take that lumber to the lumber mill. Very straightforward, right? That was like three clicks. Select, go to tree, go to mill. Boom, boom, boom. Very simple. Now, in the lower right, now that I've clicked on the lumber mill, you can see what's happening. When the planks, are, when the wood arrives, it gets turned into planks. And in the upper right, you can see what is all happening. How much is in storage and the input? How much is in storage in the output, right? Wood goes in, planks come out. Chill. Just super chill game, right? I'm going to select this worker. I want to get these things into my global storage. And I see here in the upper left, planks zero. It's because it's not in a storage facility. It's just sitting in the lumber mill. So I'm going to get these planks. And this is also tricky. So let's go over this GUI real quick. Inbound is on top. Outbound is on bottom. So I can say to this worker, I need you to supply the lumber mill with wood, or I need you to supply the lumber mill with whatever it needs. Conversely, inversely, whatever. I want you to take planks from the lumber mill, or I want you to take everything from the lumber mill and deliver it somewhere else. Let's just make this simple. I'm gonna right click on planks. I'm gonna click on my store or my base. Duder goes there, grabs some planks, drops it off. And now you can see in the upper left, we have some planks storing up. So now we're getting a nice diversity of products. And there we go. The green up arrow tells us we can upgrade a structure. In this case, it's our base. Right here in the lower right, requires coins, planks, stone, and an upgrade. So I'm going to click upgrade. And we always get a nice notification of what that meant. What does that mean? Well, 
First of all, it doesn't tell us, but what does happen is our storage capacity increases slightly. I believe instead of holding 200 lumber or wood, we'll be able to hold 300 now. So that's kind of cool. Also, our house maximum increased by 4. Also cool. That is going to allow us more workers. A lot of cool stuff, right? Let's leave these guys alone for a little bit and check back over by our village. Everything's going good. We're still making money. We're sitting on a nice amount of coin. Let's go ahead and click on a house. Because I now have planks, I can upgrade the house. Increases population capacity and demands for items at nearby markets. Let's go ahead and talk about markets. Am I, am I allowed to build a market yet? Uh, ch food market, yes. So, let's discuss the food market. As it stands right now, my people are individually taking apples off the tree and taking them to a specific house. That's fine to get our economy started, but that is ridiculously inefficient. Because this house is farther away, I might need more workers to come to here than this one. Case in point, do you see this guy just standing here? He's delivering, but there's no demand. Okay, I don't know what he's doing, actually. Oh, there we go, yep. There is now just a demand. So, what we can do is we can build something called a food market. What this does, and you see this little grid here? What this does is this actually allows us to deliver stuff to the food market. The food market distributes it to everything else for us. Now, you might get a little gung-ho about a couple things. What I originally thought, you see this green ring? I thought this green ring was the, if there's a house within this radius, you're fine. That's not the case. Now, if I move closer to the houses, watch what happens. See the houses light up and it says linked to at the bottom? That's how you know it's linked to something. So you could build a bunch of houses around one or two of these markets. But after a little bit of experimentation, I found something and I'm excited to share it with you. I hit two for the footpath. The footpath is important. It'll help our people run a bit faster and what have you. But the footpath also serves a second purpose. It actually links these items together. So I've got the food market all the way over here, but it's still linking all those houses. That is epic. I mean, that saves a ton of room, a ton of time. I don't need multiple food markets. It works out slick, 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 slick. So I'm gonna go ahead and just flop it right here, okay? I'm also gonna take all my workers and move them away so they cancel their current orders. I'm gonna tell them to come to the apple tree and come to the food market instead. And now right there, you can see an icon of house and four. And you can see that our food market is serving all of our houses. Are you holding, what are you holding, wood? <laughs> Why are you holding wood? Let's just call up another dude. Come on, apple tree, there we go, okay? So now this is going to have its own summarization of everything we're doing. How much happiness, how much product, how much what, everything and everything. It's broken down very nicely here in the food market. So, that being said, there's really nothing else to do. We've met the basics of this game. Before we wrap up for this episode, let's get a couple more houses. Now see, it doesn't touch the food market. When it does touch the food market, the food market lights up, right? Or if I touch the road, everything lights up. So this is a very pleasing visual indication of exactly what is happening. Why, why is this happening? What is occurring? This works out amazingly. It's crisp, it's clean, it's nice. So that being said, I actually kind of prefer my main walkways to have two squares. So I'm gonna do something like this. Now it's not connected, right? If I hover over this, it says four. I'm gonna add another layer of road like that. And now it's connected for five. Now I do that because later on in the game, we're gonna get wagons and large cargo, I guess cargo vehicles, I wanna say. And when we do, they will block the way. So now there's plenty of path. There's plenty of path for people to just walk down. Maybe we need more, maybe we need less, who knows. But that's the fun of finding a new game. Just experiment, see what it's all about, right? Cool. So we've got our village nice and set up. We've got our minor little industry complex here all set up. Really happy with how things are going. I'm actually going to call this our first episode. We covered a ton of material. So 
My name is John Megacycle. Thanks a ton for joining me for Factory Town. Just getting our roots down, getting a lot of things sorted, and yeah, there's still a lot to cover. So I hope to see you next time. Peace. Hey there, guys, gals, fans, and pals. Thanks for checking out my video. I also want to take a moment to thank all my supporters and donators, and if you'd like to join up with me and Game With My Crew, all the information to get connected is in the description below. Thanks again, and I hope to catch you next time.